Hey everybody, we are back with Matt's Paper 2 as promised. Your favorite uncle is back. Hello, hello, hello. All right, so people find Paper 2 quite intimidating and sometimes they think that, ah, it looks a little bit impossible. But I'm going to break down Matt's Paper 2 such that you can get it and how to maximize marks on Paper 2. Let's get into it. So number one, statistics and regression. Now this is where you can really pick up easy marks. I'd say this, these are your low hanging fruits, right? Now, if you think about it, that section, you are dealing with scatter plots, you are dealing with the five number summary. And fortunately I've curated all of that content for you. You can access it immediately after you watch this video. Now, what you want to do is, one, you want to make sure that your calculator does have a stat function because you are going to be pressing your calculator quite a bit. And guys, the last thing that you want to do is get in the exam and you are not sure how to use the statistics function. Please make it a point if you're using, uh, you know, I, I won't mention the brands of calculators. If you're using those calculators, just make sure uh, your uh, scientific calculators, just make sure that you can be able to do the easy, easy statistics function. You have to be able to interpret the data. You have to be able to do scatter plots as well as interpretation. Now guys, uh, the honest thing about this section is that it's out of 20 marks, of course, give or take uh, plus minus three marks, uh, but you can really pick up really easy marks. So if you don't know how to do this section, please go and watch those videos and they'll be very helpful for you. Number two. Analytical geometry. Now guys, that section is out of 40 marks. Not really a bad section as well. Now, what do you want to know in that section? You really want to know the properties of polygons. So you're looking at, let's say for instance, the properties of um, you know, a square. You know that the all sides are equal, they're equidistant, as well as you know, you're looking at the fact that the diagonals bisect each other. Now remember, whenever you are looking at lines that either are perpendicular or lines that are parallel, that has to do with the gradient, right? You know that parallel lines have got equal gradients. You know that perpendicular lines, the product of their gradients would be equal to negative one. Now guys, these are things that you can really pick up easy marks from. But the other section in uh, analytical geometry you really find that you have to now apply circle geometry. Remember, it still is a part of geometry, right? So what you also want to know there are properties of the axioms that you use, right? In Euclidean geometry. So you want to know things like, uh, you know, the 10 perpendicular to radius theorem, right? Because it also has to do with gradients. You also want to know things like tangents that are from the same point, you know that they're equidistant, you know you are looking at things like collinear lines. But another thing that I also touch on, which I have a video of, you have to also look at uh, the fact that whenever you've got two circles that either touch each other or that either are, you know, apart from each other, you need to be able to prove whether those uh, circles, whether they'll be able to intersect or not. And you can watch that video and see how to navigate that section. Now, again, guys, analytical geometry is really not that bad, especially if you know the formulae that you're supposed to use, but also the properties of your polygons. I would say second to statistics, that's another part where you can really pick up easy marks from. So number three, we are looking at trigonometry. Now guys, I know that some of you find this section quite intimidating. And really sometimes, you know, I, I know that it has quite a lot in it, but what I do want to advise is that all the parts of trigonometry are interrelated. For instance, you have to know what are your trig ratios, right? So this is in relation to a 90 degree triangle or otherwise called a right angle triangle. You know that 10 is uh, opposite over adjacent. You know that your cos is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So you have to be able to know all of that. But 
Uh, another thing is on the application, your double angle formulae, you have to know your compound angle formulae as well as uh, you know all the things that are related to trigonometry. Now guys, here's another uh, important thing to do. You must be able to know what are your other uh, sections that are related to proving identities. So you have to know things like square identities, like sine squared of theta plus cos squared of theta is equal to one. And of course you can uh, play around with this. This has to do with the proving of identities. Now, all of this, as I said, I've got an entire playlist on trigonometry, inclusive of just trig graphs. Guys, this is another section that sometimes people may find a little bit int uh, intimidating. Now you have to look at things like the interpretation of a trig graph or being able to translate or being able to uh, draw a trig function, right? And by the way, most of the time in metric, you will be perhaps asked to draw them uh, on the same set of axes. So please ensure that you can go through that section thoroughly it is worth about 40 marks as well. Give or take all the sections that I've given to you, you have to plus or minus three marks here and there, right? But at the end of the day, they are of equal value or equal worth. When you look at analytical geometry, when you look at trigonometry, and the next one that I'm going to include, which is Euclidean geometry. So guys, make sure that you can pick up as many marks as possible on this section. Intimidating, but not impossible. Have a look at the videos that I've curated for you. Now, and the last part of your question paper, which is usually Euclidean geometry. Guys, remember that the structure of this question paper is exactly the same every single time. So you have to know all the nine theorems that you learned in grade 11, right? Line from center, perpendicular to chord, bisect a chord, angle from center, twice angle at circumference. I can continue on and on and on. Now, what I've done is I've curated also a playlist on Euclidean geometry. Euclidean geometry is worth about 40 marks as well. So what you need to do is be able to know what those nine theorems are. But here's another very important thing that sometimes can be missed, right? You still need to know the properties of triangles, right? The sum of angles of a triangle equal to 180. You have to know things like, um, you know, the exterior angle of a triangle. You have to know things like, you know, parallel lines. What happens when you draw a transversal between parallel lines? You know, you've got your alternating angles, you've got your co-interior angle and corresponding angles. So remember that whenever you are dealing with parallel lines, they will be integrated into every single one of your, you know, diagrams in trigonometry, right? Which now leaves me to the next section, which sometimes, again, as I said, may be found to be a little bit intimidating, right? That is the proportionality theorem. Now guys, whilst some of you may want to put this as an exclusive section that has to do with Euclidean geometry, remember that it's still related to the other two sections. What do I mean by that? What I simply mean by that is that remember, you still will integrate, um, you know, ratio and proportion into, you know, circle geometry. Another thing is, you need to be able to prove congruency or similarity of triangles. So in that case, it isn't necessarily just a standalone section. It is actually related to the other sections of Euclidean geometry. Now, the last part where you need to prove, remember, all that you need to do is that you need to set yourself up such that first, you can prove similarity between two triangles. And let me advise you, all you need are two angles. To prove that two angles are similar, and the third one automatically just becomes also equal, right? Once you prove two angles equal, then the third one automatically becomes equal by third angles of a triangle, right? And then what you can do is then use the proportionality theorem, right? If we've got triangle ABC similar to triangle DEF, then you know that AB over DE 
is equal to uh, BC over EF and so on and so forth. And when you need to prove, all you need to do is set them up such that they are ratios and you can actually cross multiply between the two sections. Now guys, I've broken down section by section what paper two looks like. Now let's dive into really some um, you know, low hanging fruits and I'm going to conclude this video by just giving you tips on how to approach the last part of your exam in paper two. And now guys, as I'm about to conclude this video, I just wanna walk you through just how you can pick up marks, easy marks here and there. My first advice to you is, you know, there are some really nice low hanging fruits that you can find, especially when you have to do proofs, right? So proofs, all you need to do is just remember and write them exactly as they are. So please try to practice your proofs and to remember them as much as you possibly can. Another section that where you can just pick up easy marks. Now, some of you might be thinking, ah, oh, Malume, but 3D trick, what do you need to know there? There are two things that you essentially need. One, you need to know uh, the sign rule as well as the cos rule. Of course, you remember that, um, you know, when you're looking at a triangle, a 90 degree triangle, if you look at the three ratios, they're just an extension of the sign rule, right? So as a result, if you just note that the pattern for 3D trig is always the same. Number one, you'll have to derive an equation or you'll have to prove something. Now, usually the side that you are prove, proving is the common side to another triangle. So always start with the triangle that is the most information, right? And find a side that is common to the other side of, uh, of the other triangle, right? Now, of course, some of you may have a challenge seeing things in 3D and that's where practice really comes in, right? But I really think that you can be able to really score some good marks in that section. So what you do after you have been able to prove right uh, one section or one part equal to another right then you can use it in another triangle where we can use the sign rule right remember when do we use the sign rule uh, usually when you've got two angles and one side or when you've got two angles and two sides whatever the case may be but in particular the cos rule you will always use it when you've got two sides and an included angle so meaning two sides and the angle that is in between those two sides. So very important, that's when you can use the cosine rule. Now, here's another very important point. Remember that in maths paper two, you are also given a booklet, okay? What do I mean by that? So you will not be filling in answers on a separate wor uh, worksheet. What you will be doing is you'll be provided with a booklet. So what it means is that you can work on that booklet and the diagrams are there. You can, you know, just draw on, onto those diagrams, whatever it is that you want to do. So what that helps with is that you can start with any section of, you know, paper two, right? And in this case, remember that you always want to start with the section that you really find least intimidating. Now guys, Here's what I also want you not to do. Don't be intimidated by the different diagrams, you know, no matter how complex they may seem, at the end of the day, it's always, always the same thing. In fact, I always say, the more complex a geometric, uh, you know, uh, diagram is, in fact, the easier it is to find as many angles as possible. But as I said, I've curated all the playlists on those sections, please go and visit them immediately after you finish with this video. Now, here's another uh, very important thing, the language of mathematics. So remember, there are things like language. So remember that you are given 10 minutes of reading time before every exam. So what you want to do with that reading time is that you want to use it to try and really decipher or to really try and interpret the language as much as possible. Things like collinear. What does it mean when they say that lines are collinear? 
it means that this is actually on the same line and in fact what it means is that um, remember that the gradients are the same as well right so it's the same line so if i say to you uh, line ab is collinear with bp then it means abp must be the same line and so what that means is that i can use angles on a straight line it can mean that i can use exterior angles of a triangle but it also means that i can use exterior angles of a cyclic quad if of course you do have a circle around that so it's important for you to be able to interpret that and use the language of mathematics quite effectively in fact what i'm going to do is i'm going to drop another video where i just coach you on the language on of mathematics so how to actually interpret every single line for instance if they say to you you've got a tangent what is it that you need to look out for right if you are looking at uh, say for instance if they say to you those lines are perpendicular what exactly should you look out for in terms of uh, the mathematical language it's very important for you to know that it's very important for you to be able to interpret that correctly and now as i conclude this video i want to say to you guys i know that paper two can be somewhat intimidating i know that right i know you've got so many diagrams you've got so many things to work on however what i do want you to do is please try to get to every exam 30 minutes before time in fact they always advise an hour before this uh, the starting time what this does is that it's able to calm you down and so that you can be you can go into the exam with confidence and you can actually lessen the amount of anxiety please don't arrive at the exam venue late and secondly within that time you know that they give for reading always well of course they do not allow you to write but what it actually does is that it can actually equip you so that you know what to anticipate and you can actually start spotting the exam or rather within the exam which section you want to actually start in that has given you kind of an indication that you can actually master that section quite easily and guys in my conclusion i want to say to you you've got this you really can do well in both papers i've dropped one for paper one if you haven't watched it please go and look at that and now we are doing paper two i'm gonna do the same for physical science and i want to wish you all of god's best as you go into your exam and i really want to say to you you really have got this you will do well you will do well i'm saying this again you will do well all you need to do now calm yourself down practice as much as possible use the videos use the past exam questions as well as the questions that i've curated for you in order to equip yourself as you go into the exam well it's been a pleasure being with you and i'll see you guys again next time sharp sharp